Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a companion video to my marker swatching video that I just posted. But today I'm going to show you how I drew this and talk about my experience with markers so far. And just a heads up, I have a new Skillshare class showing my whole marker process. It goes in depth into all the layering techniques and thoughts about colors and just everything you could need to get started. So if you want to dive deeper, I highly recommend you check that out. You can also download it on Gumroad. All the links are in the description. All right, let's get started with today's demo. I'll be sharing my top five tips for what has been helping me progress in my marker journey. And the first tip is probably pretty obvious, and I know I've said it before, but start with the lightest values. The beautiful thing about having a background in watercolor is that I'm very used to preserving my highlights, meaning the color of the paper, the white of the paper, is my brightest bright. Same thing goes for markers. So if you have a background in watercolor, you probably are already one step ahead. In addition, I find it's really helpful to go a little slower at first. And even if that means I'm just making teeny tiny little marks all over the drawing, just to ease myself into it and slowly build up that confidence. It does eventually get easier, and I think in time and practice, you become a little bit more confident in your choices and you can dive in a little bit quicker <laughs> with the darker colors. But if you're just starting out, I find that it's helpful to go into it with a very gentle mindset, a kind mindset. So just start slowly establishing some of your shapes like I'm doing here, and then slowly building up the color and the depth. And something that can help with this is if you go into it with a limited palette. So instead of having every color under the sun as an option, you go in with a highlight or a few highlight options and a few midtones and a few shadows. And that automatically takes away some of the guesswork and you kind of have a more of a game plan about where to go with your colors. Throughout the drawing, you'll be layering colors and those will also lead to more color options. So it already can feel really complicated. My second tip is to start getting familiar with the process of layering. Not only does this affect the color, but it also changes the whole mood of the, of the drawing. Rather than just being singular colors next to each other, which can work, but sometimes it also can feel a bit flat. When you layer, you add a lot more dimension to it. Just at a quick glance, the viewer's eye starts to see a color story. And I think it's actually kind of magical when you start to get used to how certain colors layer and you plan ahead for those things. So your limited palette can sometimes result in a huge variety of colors and you can get really beautiful layered drawings. Some ways that I started to get used to this are to use this little sketchbook to do lots and lots of experimenting. This little sketchbook is only three and a half by five and a half inches. And what that means is that I don't feel the pressure to fill big pages with huge detailed layered drawings. I can do lots of quick little studies, although the one I'm showing you now is probably the most detailed and the largest I've done in the whole sketchbook so far. But by devoting this tiny sketchbook to doing lots of quick little studies, I've been able to get a better feel for how the markers work, how they blend, how they layer, and it's actually helping me progress more quickly than if I only ever did big detailed drawings. I do think there's a lot of value in sitting down and doing big studies, especially going more detailed because it really forces you to practice different techniques such as blending, which is a whole other thing. <laughs> it's something that I'm definitely not an expert in. I prefer a broken color technique, which means um, there is a lot of layering happening, but colors aren't always blended smoothly together. There's a lot of uh, more stylized brush or mark making happening. My next tip is about supplies. And once again, this might be super obvious, but it was something that I kind of overlooked at first. I've talked about my marker journey in another video, so if you want to hear more of an in-depth 
uh, story about that. You can go watch it. But when I bought my first set of markers, I had never even considered the fact that different brands might have different qualities and the different shapes of the markers might be good or bad. And I just bought whatever I was, whatever was closest to me. <laughs> And over time, I gave up on markers and came back to them over and over again. And it wasn't until last year when I bought my first set of Shinhan Touch Twin markers where I really fell in love with it. And I realized, wow, the actual shape of the marker makes a difference. This might sound strange to some people, but honestly, when I switch between different types or different shapes of markers, I feel such a drastic difference in my ability to control the marker and my comfort over longer sketch sessions. And I also found such a huge difference in experience between the different types of nibs. So comparing the brush tips versus the chisel tips, that made a huge difference in my enjoyment factor. And by now I've tried so many different brands and shapes and sizes that I really know what I like. Um, and now I can just slowly build up my marker collection and accumulate colors. Although, you know, I feel like I'm done for a long time because I have so many colors. And paper, of course, is going to make a huge difference, which is another thing I overlooked. I just was using random sketchbooks and different papers I already owned, never even considering things like how much the how much the paper absorbs ink or whether it's going to cause the marker ink to feather or give you crisp edges. And there are actual marker papers that make the experience so much more enjoyable. And now that I have some of those papers, I'm drawing way more often. It feels similar to watercolor in that sense where the paper makes such a difference. You don't want to be painting on paper that isn't meant for watercolor. If you do, you are seriously going to struggle. And that's exactly how I felt when I switched to good paper in my marker journey. My next tip is for people who maybe don't have a huge budget for markers or have never used markers before, and that is to start with a set of grayscale markers. I talk about this in the Skillshare class that I mentioned, but it's something that is so valuable that I wish I had started this way. I would have been way less intimidated and I think it would have helped me um, get over some of those initial struggles that I had because at first I was figuring out how to use the markers and how to pick colors and layer colors, which was all super overwhelming. I think that's a reason I gave up so many times, but you know, thankfully I'm back at it and I'm enjoying it more than ever. And so if you do decide to go with some grayscale markers, there's a few different options, at least in the brand that I like. There's cool gray, warm gray, green gray, blue gray, and they all have a slightly different tint to them. I personally fell in love with warm gray because it just has a bit more of an inviting look to it and it layers really well with all of my other colors. If I'm using a gray scale as like an undertone and then I add colors on top, that warmth in the gray really plays nicely in a landscape. And even though I do a lot of color studies now, I also fall back on my grayscale markers in times where I'm just really stressed out or anxious and I just want to draw something without any pressure or challenge of color. Because one thing I'm noticing with markers is that the most important skill is drawing, is rendering. Is Having a strong foundation in drawing makes your marker drawings much better, which is pretty obvious. But when I want to take away extra stress, I will just use grayscale because it simplifies everything a little, a little more and it lets me practice rendering light on my subject. My final tip is a bit more challenging to discuss and that is style. So first of all, if you are watching this, especially all the way to the end, I assume that you like more stylized marker drawings. Something about that more loose approach appeals to you. 
And maybe you either do it yourself or you want to be able to do it. And that only comes with time. So don't feel like when you first sit down to do your first marker drawing, you need to accomplish this. You probably won't. I didn't. And I, and I have a very loose painting style. So I actually assumed straight off the bat that my marker drawings would replicate that. And I was so wrong. <laughs> but it did happen in time. And that is only because of that brush mileage, as I call it, or in this case, marker mileage. Putting the marker to the paper and making line after line after line. But once you get more and more familiar with different types of marker techniques, those options open up to you. This kind of goes back to the talk about supplies, where if you're using a brush tip, you're probably going to end up with a very different look versus a chisel tip. When I use my chisel tips, I'm kind of forced to get really creative with my marks because I only have so many options. I can't just let things naturally blend together quite as easily, but that's why I love them. They make the process of working a little bit more loosely and expressively a little bit easier. Because it's such a bold mark, the second it hits the paper, I have to accept it. And in that moment, I learn from it and I move on. If you're interested in listening to my kind of step-by-step -step process for layering, blending things, talking about color, how I render rocks and trees and all sorts of different things, make sure to check out my Skillshare class, or again, you can download it separately on Gumroad. And I hope that you guys really enjoyed this demo. Um, I'm sure I'll be posting some other like shorter tutorials in the future as well. But for now, I'm just gonna keep enjoying the process of learning and I hope you do as well. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you all again soon. Take care.